It could be said Cousin Brucey knows more about rock and roll than the encyclopedia because he lived it. Where do you come from? I know, sweetie. You love the Beatles? You love... I know you don't. Now, if you grew up in the 60s, especially on the East Coast, your listening favorite was Cousin Brucey Morrow. Go, go! Cousin Brucey, what was it about you that you were able to cut through and become one of the few national DJs? Yeah, you know, I, I think I discovered at a very early age when I got through with my my break-in period, which I did in Bermuda, by the way, which is kind of nice, right? I boast about that. Uh, I realized that radio and television, it's a, a very interesting, simple solution. You talk right to somebody, not at. And I think that really was my secret. So I developed that. And uh, my interviews and my uh, shows are really visits, I'm never on the air. I'm never broadcasting. I'm never on television or movies. Or I am visiting friends. And I think that's what allowed me to cut through. For years, we could listen to you on Sirius XM. And now you've come full circle back to WABC in New York. I woke up one day, Joe, and I realized there's something missing. I had 15 pretty good years on Sirius. Before that, it was CBS, FM, and NBC, ABC, and all of them. Uh, I walked out of WABC some 46 years ago. I've now come full circle in my career. But I realized one day that I was missing this intimacy. I was missing, I'll call it local radio, although very honestly, there's no such thing as local radio anymore. But I missed that little local feel. And I realized that, and I knew I had to have that back. So I waited till the end of this contract. And uh, I met a guy named Cousin John. Cousin John bought WABC radio. Can you imagine somebody buying this mega monster radio station? And he signed a personal check and he and I became friends because he used to listen to me on Sirius. And uh, one day the conversations between him asking me for uh, to play for his wife, Elvis or the Everly brothers or the Beatles or the Stones became a little more serious. And we signed a deal the day after my contract ended. I wanted, I wanted to get back to local slash national radio. I want that feel. I remember we would listen to you when we went to the beach and the transistor radio was sitting there in the sand. It was just great fun. If you remember, I even told you when to turn over. You had too much sun. I was, I was worried about you. And <laughs> I, feel, I feel this audience so intimately. I feel them so personally. So for us living here in the desert, we'll get a bit of East Coast attitude, I would imagine. Oh, you know, I'll tell you something quick if we have a moment. The very first thing I do when I get on the air, when I play my cousin Brucey Four Seasons theme and I sing a little bit and I say, here's the deal. No politics at all. No politics, no COVID. We're not going to have any kind of problems. I want these three hours reserved for you and I to escape. I say you and I, say a visit to escape. And it works beautifully. And people love the idea. They know they're going to be free for three hours. And by the way, how did you get the name Cousin Brucey? Oh, Cousin. Oh, we're Cousin. Well, we go back to WINS in New York, a local radio station in New York. And one day, a little old lady was escorted into my studio by a guard. And uh, this little old lady came into the studio and said to me, quote, do you believe we're all related? Now, I'm a Brooklyn kid. I, you know, I grew up in Brooklyn. So I know when somebody you know, wants more, something more than listening to Elvis Presley. And I said, yes, ma'am, I do believe we're all related. She locked onto my eyes. Now, when somebody locks onto your eyes, like I'm locking onto yours right now, Joe, right? Uh, you, you listen to them. And I said, yes, ma'am, I do believe we're all related. And she simply said, cousin, lend me 50 cents. I'm broke. I can't get home. I'm really poor. Well, I put my record on. I cued my record on, you know, bloom. We used to do in those days and uh, before digital. And uh, I gave her the 50 cents. She said to me, Cousin, we love you. Thank you very much. She wasn't interested in my music or me. She needed money. And we were right by Central Park at the, in the studio. She left. Now, that night in the Brooklyn Battery Tunnel, I lived in Brooklyn those days, and uh, at about mid-tunnel, I hear Cousin Brucey. From that moment on, I became Cousin Brucey. Yeah, it was like somebody sent right, a, a little message to me. So Cousin Brucey was born. Now you're on from 6 to 9 Eastern, 3 to 6 our time. How can we listen? 
There's an app. There's a website. There's Google. You tell Alexa, tell Siri. It's all over. But six to nine. Now, I'm going to tell you a secret. Uh, I have a big surprise, and I have not mentioned this to anybody, right, honestly. Uh, starting on the 31st, by Vox Populare, Voice of the People, I'm going for another hour. They want four hours. Three hours goes too fast. So nobody is this. You have an exclusive. That's what we used to say on the air. Exclusive, exclusive. You have an exclusive. So we're going to go four hours starting on the 31st of October. Nobody knows that yet. Hmm. That's good news. More Brucey. You are in a class by yourself. Thank you so much for spending time with us. And we'll be listening this Saturday night. Thank you so much. Go, go, Cousin Brucey.